Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, we're taking a look at GoCollect's hottest Silver Age comics for the month of February. That is right. It's been a little while since we've done a hot list here on the channel, and I'm excited to get into these books because there's a lot of interesting takeaways and a lot of cool books that we get to talk about here today. Now, for those who don't know, GoCollect puts out monthly articles that analyze the hottest selling Silver Age comics based on increase in volume of sales. So think of these Silver Age books as the most liquid out there in this last month. But before I get into the video, if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe, for enjoying the content, helps support the channel, doing those things, I would appreciate it. But let us get into this article here today. Now, of course, I will put a link in the description if you guys want to do your own reading. But this article is written by Ryan Kirksey. He puts this one out every month, and I will break it down for you one by one. Now, coming in here at the number five spot is a very cool book to talk about, one that I don't actually think I've ever talked about in any hot list ever on the channel. This one right here is X-Men number five, up 52 spots. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this is the book that came out in 1964, written by Stan Lee and drawn by Jack Kirby, that would feature the third appearance of Magneto, second appearance of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, which includes Scarlet Witch, Quilksilver, Toad, and Mastermind. Now, this is one of those interesting Silver Age books to talk about because it doesn't really come up that much. I mean, we're talking about third appearance of Magneto. I think in order for your third appearance to matter in comic book collecting for a character is that you have to just be so popular. And thankfully, Magneto is just that. I mean, he, of course, he makes his first appearance in X-Men number one, and then X-Men number four is his second appearance. Now, the other factors here, second appearance of Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, I think that that's pretty cool as well. And so it, it is interesting to think about this book as, you know, you're kind of getting a lot of value in here, but also at the same time, you're not really the go-to book for any one of these particular reasons. Although it is kind of a book that you don't often see that much and you don't often see, you know, people talking about it, which makes it kind of unique, makes it kind of special in its own right. I mean, we're still at the end of the day talking about a top five X-Men comic book run. I feel like X-Men as a series is at least the third most popular series for Silver Age collectors to collect, obviously behind Amazing Spider-Man and Fantastic Four. But as Ryan points out in the article, one of the reasons why this book has been popping up, perhaps on the list this month, is due to the fact that, you know, we've been hearing a lot more rumbles of Magneto starting to maybe make a cameo appearance in Secret Wars Avengers. You know, a lot of people are talking about Scarlet Witch getting her own solo movie. And, you know, people are looking to make those spec plays. I feel like, you know, now that the market has had such a big correction where we are here in 2023, people are looking to kind of stack up some of those books that maybe they're going to have, you know, uh, pay off, you know, a couple years from now when, you know, the market turns around and the money printer turns back on and the values keep skyrocketing once again. But as we dig into the numbers, let's take a look at some of the values here. 1,438 universal copies on the CGC census. Probably not a book that is often sent in for grading, unless of course you have it at the very, very high end of the grades here. Four 9.8s, but there hasn't been a sale since 2014. In fact, there hasn't really been much sales above that of the 9.0 grade. So let's go down here to the 7.5, 80 on the census. Fair market value is 1,200, although 30 day moving is 780. So definitely a book that, like every other book out there in the market, has had a pullback from the heights of 2021, basically at the time when everybody was setting record prices for this book, but where it currently sits right now at 780, still above the prices that it was going for in 2020, around the $552 range. A couple 780 sales back to back here on Heritage Auctions for the 7.5. And then down here at the low grade, you know, 4.5 to 2 you can see that this is one of those things I talked about uh, in terms of my predictions of 2023, where you'd have a lot of price compression. You know, in the last 30 days, a 4 has gone for 240 and a 20 has gone for 256. So, you know, it feels like there's a lot of sellers down here on the bottom or perhaps a lot of buyers, you know, people that just want to have a copy of this thing in their collection. They're not too worried about the grade. They just want to have a copy. And it seems like, you know, that $250 price point is going to be what you're going to have to pay because when you go onto eBay looking for raw copies of this thing, I don't often see them listed for much less than that. So 250 seems right to me. All right, let's go on now to the fourth hottest Silver Age comic of the month. And the fourth hottest Silver Age comic of the month is a classic book, one that a lot of people love to have in their one that a lot of people love to have in their collection. But of course, the book I'm talking about is Amazing Spider-Man number 39, up 55 spots. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this is the book that came out in 1966, written by Stan Lee and drawn by John Romita. And what is the significance of this? Well, it is just that. It is the first artwork in Spider-Man for John Romita. It is also the first time that the Green Goblin reveals himself to be Norman Osborn. Now, this is one of those books that I like to call pure collector's books. When you're a book that has the first uh, interior artwork by this 
this famous artist or the first written work by this particular person or the first time that this character that is significant and this thing happens in the story that is significant and that's why you have the distinction of a key issue. I feel like a lot of those types of books are ones that the very passionate collector collectors like to have in their collection. And this one right here, I think is a perfect example of that. Of course, the Green Goblin made his first appearance in Amazing Spider-Man number 14. There's also the first appearance of Norman Osborn in this run as well. So there's a lot of different kind of Green Goblin keys that people gravitate towards. But I think that this one right here kind of has a lot of different interesting things going on. I think this one is really interesting to talk about. Similar to X-Men number five, where we're seeing, you know, some of these hot books books that are now showing up on these lists are ones that kind of indicate more of a historical significance in them being, you know, important books to the collector runs. Not too much spec value, although, you know, you could say that maybe we're going to get Norman Osborn eventually, and that's going to be a big movement in the MCU. I think this is more significant due to the credits and the iconic cover, and that's really why you're seeing a lot of movement for it in the market. But as we dig into the numbers for this one, let's take a look at some of the values here. CGC Census has 3,000 universal copies on the census, which to me is is quite high for what I would say is not a major, major key. And I think that that goes to show that there's still a lot of collectors that just love this book, want to have it in their collection. They feel like it is very, very significant. 9.8s have nine on the census. Hasn't been a sale in the last 30 days up into the 80 range. So let's take a look at the 75 here. 244 on the census. Fair market value is 800. 30 day moving right in line to that. One year was 850. You can see 30 day moving is 800. So a book that, you know, maybe saw a little bit of a pullback, certainly spiked up like a lot of books in 2021 and might still be a little high above the trend line, which is a little bit concerning if you're asking me as far as where the values for this book can go. But, you know, it might be able to hold for long enough due to the fact that it is a significant Spider-Man book. And then down here in the mid grade, 4.5 fair market value is 300, 30 day moving right in line to that around the $300 range. And then down here at the bottom, I'm not gonna always see it slabbed at the low grade, but when you go into eBay looking for raw copies, typically you can see them being sold around that 150 to $200 range. All right, let's move on now to the third hottest Silver Age comic of the month. And the third hottest Silver Age comic of the month is one that is probably not surprising to see as a book popping up on the hot list here, especially when we're talking about increased volume of sales. But it is sort of surprising to see it on this list due to the fact that, you know, this was a a book that for a long time had been kind of dead in the water. But the book we're talking about, of course, is Avengers number 10, up 58 spots. And what is the significance of this? This is the book that came out in 1964, written by Stan Lee and drawn by Jack Kirby, that would feature the first appearance of the Kang variant known as Immortus. Now, we recently got the Ant-Man Quantumania film that featured Kang the Conqueror. I won't go into spoilers of what happened, but let's just say there's a certain thing that happened, a certain person that appeared, and for some strange reason, a lot of people wanted to pick up this book after the fact. And I actually made a video uh, a week ago where I was talking about how even though the movie has gotten poor reviews, you know, we still saw a lot of movement for Kang books in the market. I mentioned this one in particular along with the Ramatut book, and it's good to see that I wasn't actually crazy to think that there was a lot of volume. And I think one of the most encouraging things about seeing it on this list is that, you know, this is a book that absolutely went bananas when we got Loki season one all the way back in 2021, almost two years ago. It does kind of show that the demand is still there. And even if you're somebody who thinks that the MCU is not doing as good as it once did, there are still comic collectors that like to own the books that are reflected on screen. And it does feel like this book, you know, still has a lot more opportunity to continue to grow as we possibly see more things in the MCU in the future. But as we dig into the numbers for this one, let's take a look at some of the values here. CGC Census has this at 1,187. I actually don't remember what the census was for this book before we got Loki, but I have to imagine a lot were sent in to CGC once we got that show. 9.8s have four on the census, but there hasn't been a sale in quite some time, not since 2015. But if we go down here to the 8.5 grade, CGC census has it at 74 copies. 30 day moving is 480, which is surprising because the 80 30 day moving is 596. Again, you know, this is that any given sale, any given day. But let's take a look at some of the values here for where this book was, you know, back in 2021. You can see that this was a book that definitely had, you know, a skyrocketed and like every book had its pullback, had its correction, but is still, you know, sitting above its 2020 price where this was a book selling at 319 say $400 in September of 2020 and now their most recent sale is you know February here of 2023 selling at 480 and I would say that that person actually got a really good price because like I already mentioned the 80 went for 596 down here at the mid grade level 4.5 86 on the census fair market value has it around the $250 range 30 moving right in line to that at $250 you can see that this is a book that generally speaking sells at that $200 range right now and I would say that 
that is a pretty accurate price because when I go into eBay looking for raw copies, typically they sell around that $150 to $200 level. All right, let's move on now to the second hottest Silver Age comic of the month. And the second hottest Silver Age comic of the month is another classic kind of collector's collector's book. But this one right here is Amazing Spider-Man number 16, up 63 slots. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this is the book that came out in 1964, written by Stan Lee and drawn by Steve Ditko, and would be the first meeting of Spider-Man and Daredevil. Now, like I've been discussing with the Green Goblin book, this book right here is another one that is very, very important, I would say, to the Amazing Spider-Man run and the story of Amazing Spider-Man. Of course, you have the first meeting of Spider-Man and Daredevil, two of the most iconic street-level superheroes there is in Marvel comic books. And, you know, there's been a lot of talk, a lot of speculation, you know, a lot of rumors going on about the Daredevil Born Again show, a lot more rumors about Tom Holland coming back as Spider-Man. Perhaps we're going to be getting a Spider-Man 4. Tom Holland's maybe going to be involved in Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. And a lot of people are maybe starting to think, hey, are they going to put Spider-Man and Daredevil in some kind of movie or show together? Perhaps Tom Holland will make some cameo appearances in the Daredevil Born Again show. I mean, we saw Charlie Cox Daredevil in the Spider-Man movie. Perhaps they want to get these characters back together once again and actually see them in their superhero team up actually fighting the Kingpin. That would definitely be a really awesome moment for fans. And I think a lot of people are looking at this book on top of the Daredevil one where they also have a crossover appearance. And a lot of people feel like these are great books to have in the collection. I mean, if you're a fan of both of these characters, I can't think of a better book to have in your collection. And once again, this is one of the hottest Silver Age books of the month because people are thinking about the exciting team up that could be and also the prices have come down to a place where people are feeling like buying once again. And speaking of those prices, as we dig into the numbers, let's take a look at some of the values here. CGC Census has this at 2,400 universal copies. 9.8 has seven on the census. But if we go down here to the 6.5 grade, CGC Census has 172. 30 day moving is 960. One year, 934. So actually a little bit hotter this last 30 days than this was at the one year. Of course, like all books did, is to set their record price in 2021. So we're not talking about, you know, the peak record price for this thing at the last sale of 960. But generally speaking, there still seems to be quite a bit of demand for this book. And, and again, if you've been following my Silver Age Index videos and things like that, one of the things I always say is that, you know, when we start to get the interest rate cuts, that I think is going to set off the bull market once again for comic books. So until we get that, I don't really expect us to be setting record prices like we did in 2021. Uh, 4.5 30-day moving is 504. 40 30-day moving is 530. And then 20 30-day moving is 350. And as you can see, 350 still a very very pricey book this is definitely one of the ones that a lot of collectors like to get in their collection and i would say that that number is pretty accurate because when you go into ebay looking for raw copies you'd be hard pressed to find this book selling for less than that 250 to 300 range all right let's move on now to the hottest silver age comic of the month and the hottest silver age comic of the month is a very very interesting one one that i think is kind of a maybe an underrated book but recently has been getting a lot of love a lot of shine this one right here is avengers number 11 up a whopping 60 five spots and what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this is the book that came out in 1964, written by Stan Lee and drawn by Steve Ditko and Jack Kirby. And we feature the second appearance of Kang the Conqueror, the second appearance of Wonder Man, and would also be the first time that Spider-Man meets the Avengers. Now, like I already mentioned with some of the other books on this list, of course, there's been a lot of attention to the Kang the Conqueror books. A lot of people are looking to this one if they can't get their hands on Avengers number eight. A lot of excitement for Tom Holland coming back as Spider-Man. We're going to get Spider-Man 4. He's going to be involved in the the Avengers movies in the future. And this is one of those second appearance books that I really like as second appearance books. I mean, I always talk about how, you know, second appearances, I think, are really cool books to get if that second appearance can give you something a little bit different than what the first appearance gives you. So, for instance, if I think about ASM 50, first appearance of King Kingpin, and then the second appearance actually has him on the cover, I feel like that is significant for that particular book. This one right here is the second appearance of Kang the Conqueror, but it also happens to be, you know, that first Spider-Man in the Avengers title. So I think that that's kind of a cool factor in its own right. So you have sort of, you know, bonus aspects to that second appearance, which makes this book uh, be able to stand on its own in comparison to Avengers number eight. And I do think that this is a book that really has trended up uh, in these last couple of years due to the fact that Kang the Conqueror does seem to be the big bad in the MCU. But it also does feel like, you know, if the spec market was what it was, you know, all the way back in 2016, 2018, it does feel like that this would have been a book that the market would have had more eyes on due to the fact that, you know, Spider-Man joining the Avengers is always a big, 
you know, kind of storyline in Marvel comic books. And we actually did see that moment in Infinity War with Tom Holland and Robert Downey Jr. But if we dig into the numbers for this one, let's take a look at some of the values here. CGC Census has it at 1,572 universal copies. 9.8s have three on the census. Let's go down here to the 8.5 where we can see a 30-day moving. 108 on the census. Fair market value is 1350. 30-day moving is 840. So definitely down from the one-year moving at 1,000. And you can see that this is a book that had definitely shot up in 2021. 7.0s have 133 on the census. 30-day moving is 500. One year, kind of right in line to that. And you can see a lot of consolidation here in the mid-grade level where a 5.5 sells for 340 and a 4.0 sells for 300. And then down here at the bottom, not going to see it always slabs the low grade, but when you go into eBay looking for raw copies, typically they sell around that now 150 maybe $200 level, depending on the deal, depending on the grade. Anyways, that's all I got for this video. Those were GoCollect's hottest Silver Age comics for the month of February. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys have any of these books? Did you guys pick up any of these books this last month? Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content. I'll see you in the next video.